Hello, 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 everybody. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for joining me tonight. Come on in as you're coming in. Give God the glory. Give God the praise that belongs to him. The praise that is due to him. Glorify our God on tonight. Give him the glory. Give him the praise that is due to him. Come on in as you're coming in. Praise God. Tell, tell him thank you for today. Tell him thank you for getting you up this morning and waking you up and and allowing you to see this beautiful day, the day that he has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give him the praise. Give him the glory that is due to him. Father God, we thank you. Father God, we love you because you first loved us. Father God, we, we thank you for just being the God that you are, our creator, our father. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the honor. We give you the praise of being who you are, Father God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for watching over us all today, Lord. We thank you for seeing us through, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be here today, Lord. Some people didn't wake up this morning, but he allowed you to be here to, to give him glory, to give him honor on today. Thank you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord, on tonight. We thank you for this day that you have blessed us with. Thank you, Lord. Give him the glory. Give him the honor. Come in his presence with the password. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We love you, Father, and we thank you, Father. Thank you on tonight. Thank you for coming in. Father God, uh, we're going to go into prayer. Father God, thank you for um, just allowing your people to come on tonight. Father God, even the people that you will speak to on, uh, later. Thank you for just seeing us through, Lord. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for being there for us, Lord God. Thank you for just loving us and protecting us and guiding us and directing us father god thank you for just being who you are our father our father lord god thank you thank you lord thank you we cover the people that you are sending tonight and even later with the blood of jesus christ from the crown of their head to the soles of their very feet father god lord had allowed them to have an ear to hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to the church on tonight in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. All glory to God. So tonight, it's going to be a teaching. I don't have a title. Maybe God will give me a title later on, but I don't have a title. So that's why I said just join me. But tonight, what the Lord is saying is that he wants you to allow him to lead you. He wants you to allow him to lead you and not to be led by your flesh. I want to talk about the word flesh. It's, it's carnal in Greek. The word flesh is carnal in Greek. And it means fleshly. It means fleshly. It means to be under the control of the animal appetites. It means to be governed um, by your mere human nature rather than the spirit of God. And so I want you to think about, um, we talk about the animal appetites. When you talk about being carnal, when you talk about being fleshly, I always like to give this example because it allows you to see clearly what the flesh is, what the flesh does. And so if you can imagine, if you had an a, a, a animal that was not trained, a lion, a tiger, a bear, and you put yourself in front of this animal or some a piece of meat, and this animal is not trained, what would this animal do? He will attack you. He will attack whatever you put in front of it. Whether you tell him not to do it, whether you throw something at him not to do it, he will still go after you or the thing that you put in front of him. The animal appetites doesn't want to, to be tamed. It doesn't want, it want to do what it wants to do. The flesh wants to do what it wants to do. The flesh wants to act like it want to act. The flesh doesn't want to submit to God. The flesh doesn't want to pray and fast. The animal appetites, it's the flesh. It wants to just do what it wants to do. And so what God is saying is that we should not be controlled by our flesh, but rather by the Spirit of God. We are to be led by the Spirit of God, by the Holy Spirit. So the Lord is saying, allow him to lead you and you follow because if he leads you, you won't be doing what your sinful nat nature craves. And so he gave me this scripture, Romans 6 and 12. It says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. So here the word sin, the word sin is harmartia in the Greek. 
It is an archery turn for missing the mark in the sense that an arrow misses its target in the sense that you may miss the path of doing right. And so this term in my study, this term actually comes from Aristotle when he wrote, uh, wrote poetry and one of the words uh, it meant when missing the mark, what it meant was um, error. It meant the word error. And so when you look at the word error, the word error means to be incorrect. It means to just do something that is just flat out wrong. It means to do something, something could have been made an error by mistake. And so what God is saying, whatever it is regarding sin, sin is still sin. At the end of the day, whether it was done wrongfully, it was intentionally done, or whether you did not know that it was sin because it was unknown to you. Whatever it was, sin is still sin. And it's offensive to a holy, to a pure, a pure and a righteous God that we serve. And so sin doesn't have any gray areas. Sin is black and white. Sin is sin. And so I was reading the book of Joshua. The Lord led me to read the book of Joshua. And in chapter between 7 and 8, it talks about sin. It God gave, gives us a picture of what, um, what sin does and how it, it, what sin does is separates us and we don't have a connection with God. It's not that God leaves us, but when we sin, we leave God. God never leaves us. But when you allow sin to enter in, it separates you from God. You no longer have that connection with God. And it pulls you further and further away from him. And so I'm reading the book of Joshua and I get to the seventh chapter and I see that, um, but what, before we get to the seventh chapter, in the beginning of the book of Joshua, you see that God had given Joshua a commission. He commissioned him out to, um, to lead the people of Israel into their promised land. And so he tells him, one of the instructions, he, one of the things he told him that will happen is if he followed the instructions, if he obeyed what God told him to do, they, everything that their foot touched would be theirs. That was their land. And so when you get to chapter 7, you see that Ai was one of the enemies or the land that they were supposed to, re to receive. From, they, were the Canaanite, they were a Canaanite city. And they were, supposed, they were to receive this land. They were to defeat their enemies. However, when they went to Ai and began to um, scope it out, began to be, send their spies out, guess what happened? When they went over to the land, they were defeated by the enemy. Now, God told them that everything their foot would touch would be theirs. But when they went over to this land and Ai to take over the land that God said was theirs, and they would have the victory over the, over the enemy, they could not receive, they, they were defeated. Why? It was because sin was in the camp. And so what sin does is that, it no longer allows the presence of God to be there when you're in sin. And you no longer have the protection of God when you're in sin. Against their enemies. They had the, the presence of God was not there. The protection of God was not there against their enemies when they went into to take over the land that God said was theirs. And so what happened when they went over, they killed about 31 of their soldiers. And what Joshua did is a few of the people that was with him, they cried out to God, like, what, Lord, what's going on? Why are we defeated? What happened? And what God did was reveal what was going on. He revealed that there was sin in the camp. God exposed the enemy. He exposed the sin. That is a picture of what happens when you're in sin. What God does is he reveals it. Sometimes you don't even know what you've done. And when you're in the presence of God, God will begin to show you the things that are in your heart that he just wants you to speak out loud and confess and take ownership of it and ask for forgiveness. And so sin was in the camp. God exposed the sin. And, and Ai, um, Achan was the one who stole the things that God said was not, that he wasn't supposed to take. He stole it. He was disobedient to God. And so because of that, they did, they did not defeat the enemy. So Achan, the man Achan who had committed the sin, would allow sin to be in the camp. He had to say what he did. 
So that is confession. And at the end of this chapter, on chapter 7, what happened with sin was that once it was revealed, once it was exposed, it now had to go. How did it leave? Not only did sin affect his life physically, Aiken, a um, Aiken's life physically, it affected his family's life. It affected his possessions. And they had to burn him up. He was killed with fire and his family was killed by fire. What is God saying? Sin has to go. When you ask God, when you, when you come before God and confess out loud what the sin is, the things that you're doing, things even when we repent, we, we come before God and ask God for forgiveness for the things that we have done and the things that we did not know that we have done that was offensive to God. And, when, and what God does is we ask him for forgiveness and then he cleans us up. That fire was a picture of a burning of how God will purify us to burn it up, to get sin out of us, to clean us up of all unrighteousness, of the things that is not pleasing before him. God wants us to, he wants you to burn sin up. He doesn't want sin to, to because he can't dwell in sin. They lost the battle. They were defeated by their enemy because God could not dwell in a place where there was sin. There was no longer presence of God. There was no longer protection of God because sin was in the camp. And so when they got rid of the sin, they took the land. The land was theirs. They received the land when they got rid of the sin. How can you get to the promises of God, the things that God has said is already yours when sin is in the camp? When you live it in sin, how can you fulfill your true destiny in Christ when you're living in sin? So, there is protection in God when you're in right standing with him. There is protection in God. You think about the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus, it talked about how everything was going on in the world when God was sending the plagues. The world was affected by the plagues. But the people that were in Goshen, the people that were drawing near to God, the children of Israel, everything that happened in the world did not happen in Goshen. They were protected because they were in God. They drew near to God. There's a protection in God, not outside of God, not living a life of sin. So here, the scripture tells us don't allow sin to reign. The word reign means to rule. It means to be king. Don't allow sin to be king. Don't allow sin to reign in your life. That you should obey it. That you should listen to it. That you should hearken to its command. In the lust thereof. So it's saying, responding to sin, doing, you're responding to sin, doing exactly what your flesh is telling you to do. When you're hearkening, when you're obedient to what sin is telling you to do. When sin is ruling over your life, sin is king over your life. And what God is saying, when you become the slave of, you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey. That becomes your master. Whatever you choose to obey, you are a slave of. So when you think about it, it's only two people, two think people that you can serve. The God of this world, which is Satan, or God Almighty. When you're living in sin and when you are operating in sin and you choose to live from the flesh and allow sin to rule your life and you obey sin, you are actually obeying the devil. 
And so I like what Joshua said at the end of the chapter. He talked about, he brought the people together to tell them what God was telling him to tell them. And he was giving them a recap of everything that God had taken them through. He took them through knowing that who he was, knowing that the things that he protected them from, showing them the things, the way, the way he showed up in their lives before, the way he fed them with manna, the when they did not lack a thing. He was recapping for them, telling them everything that God had done and telling them not to um, come out of sin, not to worship false gods. This is what Joshua was telling them. But at the end of it, I love it, he says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. And he says at the end of this, but as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Literally, this is a choice you have to make. Whether you're going to choose to serve the God of this world, which is Satan, or God Almighty, who created him, who is ruler over everything. Choose whom you're going to serve. You cannot be in between. There is a black and white. Sin is black and white. It's no gray areas. So if you're sitting on the fence, you're still in a dangerous place. Today, is, God is calling you out of sin. He's calling you to come back to him. He's calling you to repent. He's calling you to confess out loud your sins. To draw near to him so that he can clean you up of our unrighteousness. I experienced it firsthand coming out of the world myself and choosing that I was going to serve God. Sitting before him and I couldn't stand before, sit before a holy God because I was filthy. I was dirty with sin. I had never come back to God to ask him for forgiveness, to confess my sins or to repent. I had never done that. So I couldn't stand in the presence of a holy God. What do you think was going to happen when I made it to God? In, on the, in the head? What do you think was going to happen if I passed? What was, what was going to happen? If I couldn't do it in my closet, what makes you think I was going to do it there? I couldn't stand in his presence. I immediately felt convicted. He immediately showed me what was in my heart so that I could speak it out loud, confess my sins, ask him for forgiveness, and make a turnaround. I literally seen a wall come up. What God said, from when I repented, a wall went up. I could no longer go back living the life that I was living without God. That was true repentance. Repentance means that you turn. You make a better choice and you choose to serve God. He's always the better choice. If God, God is leading you to things, God is leading you to what he has promised you. But sin will not, you can't go with, in, with sin. You can't go living in sin. So the scripture ends with this. That ye should obey the lust thereof. Lust meaning the desire, craving, longing, or desire for what's forbidden. In the book of James, chapter 1, verse 14 and 15, it says, Temptation comes from your own desires. It comes from our own desires, which entice us to drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions, and when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Death. What is death? It could be physical death, because aching... Achan, when he sinned, he died physically. Sin can kill you physically. Spirit, a spiritual death could happen. When you're in sin, we've seen this in the book of Genesis with Adam and Eve. 
when they took the bite of the fruit, they didn't die physically, but they had a spiritual death to take place. What is a spiritual death? A spiritual death is when a dead person is in the room and everybody is worshiping God. Everybody is aware of who God is. Everybody is praising God. Everybody is in tune with what the preacher is preaching. Everybody worshiping, everybody singing, everybody praising God, clapping and dancing, but the dead person is not moving. A spiritual death. And when a spiritual death happens, there has to be a revival to take place to revive the person, to wake the person up to who God is. You take a plant, a peace lily, and you don't water a peace lily. It, it's just... When you don't water it, you can see the plant just drooping, right? But as you begin to put water on it, it begins to come back alive. It begins to revive itself. That's revival. That's reviving the spirit from a spiritual death. It's an awareness to God. So seeing or have you you have a physical death, you have a spiritual death, and it has you in eternal damnation forever. What is forever? Think about a headache. Some of you, you know, you pray and ask God to relieve you of the headache, and it goes away. You may take a, a, a medication to get rid of the headache, and it goes away here. But in hell, it's forever. The headache is never going away. It is forever. That's eternally. That's eternal death. Damnation. Hell. So it says, when, and when sin is allowed to grow, it births death. And so this scripture also said, temptation comes from your own desires, which entices us and drags us away. Well, what is temptation? I want you to always think of temptation like baked. Think of, the, think of it like bait. The enemy knows what you like. The enemy knows what you are dealing with. He knows what strongholds you may have in your life. He knows what's going on. He knows. And so when you think about bait, think about a mouse trap when there is cheese on the mouse trap. It looks good. It looks yummy to the mouse. And the enemy is like, here you go. I know you like it. I know you want it. Come and eat the cheese. And you go over, the mouse go over there and take the cheese. And what happens? <laughs> trap. It was a trap. It was a setup to get you to take the bait, to get you to fall in sin. And he says, got them now. Got them now. But can I tell you, you don't stay there when you have done something that was offensive to God, that was not pleasing to him, and that is sin. You come back to God immediately. Confess out loud what you've done. Ask God for forgiveness and allow him to clean you up of all unrighteousness. Don't allow yourself to be separated from God. This is God. God never leaves us, but we leave God. The farther you get, you getting further and further away from God because you in sin. Come back to God and repent. Stay in his presence. Stay in the presence of God. Don't leave God. Stay in the presence. Come back. Close the gap of separation. When sin comes in, there is a gap of separation. Close the gap of separation and come back to God. And so here, the lust of the flesh is found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 and 21. And it says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. And these are the results. These are the results. Sexual immorality. I'm not going to go into detail with all of them, just a few of them. Sexual immorality. Well, what is sexual immorality? Adultery. It's sleeping around knowing that you are married and you're with another person and you're married. 
You have made a covenant with God as a married couple and you're committing adultery. Fornication is fornication. It is sex. Fornication is sex outside of the bonds of marriage. Premarital sex. Homosexuality. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Don't play with God because he will not be mocked. It's between a man and a woman. It also says impurity. Impurity is uncleanliness. It's impurity. It's filthy. It's dirty. It's sin. Lustful pleasures. It was lax. I'm going to try to this word. Laxivious behavior that was in um that was in that was in the King James Version. Lustful pleasures is laxivious behavior. What does this mean? Laxivious behavior is the attire that you wear. What it has something to do with the attire that you wear. Women, you have everything out. Some women have everything out. You want everybody to see you. Why? What is that about? It's the way you dress. It's a it's lust. It's sexiness. Why? It is viewing expli sexually explicit content, magazines, movies, televisions, pornography, lust. Lust. What is lust? You see. For example, it may be a man or a woman lusting after you. Ooh, you look good. It's just lusting. You, your eyes, all you, you looking, dressing a woman, undressing a woman with your eyes. Just lust. Lustful. This is laxivious behavior. Idolatry. Idolatry, worshiping false gods, lowercase g. Worshiping the things of this world, putting things before God. Some people put their children before God. Some people put their spouses before God. They put their parents before God. They put their jobs before God. They put their money before God. And God created all of it. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Sorcery, magic. Instead of a person looking to hear from God, they instead go to Satan. They instead go listen to the devil. Horoscopes. Superstition. Palm reading. Mediums. Deuteronomy 18 and 10 and 12 says this. For example, Never sacrifice your son or daughter as a burnt offering. I want to stop right there because I want to teach you what this is. A burnt offering or making sacrifices, human sacrifices, was lowercase g, worshiping the God of Molech. It's human sacrifice. So today's human sacrifice is abortion. So when someone is aborting their child, they're worshiping the God of Molech. The, the, the world wants you to think that it's okay to abort your child. But God actually says in his word that children are a gift and a reward from him. It goes on to say, and do not let your people practice fortune telling or use sorcery or interp interpret omens or engage in witchcraft or cast spells or function as mediums or psychics or call for spirits of the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord. Don't die in sin when you can come back to God. Hostility, hatred, a strong dislike towards people, persons or things. Quarreling.
Discipline. Variance, contention, and strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, it's pride, it's putting putting yourself before others. It's a lift up, lifted up spirit, a spirit above correction, a spirit that don't, don't do no wrong. It's, a spirit is arrogant, it's stubborn, it's puffed up, it's proud. It doesn't recognize their need for God. They are self-reliant on self and not God. People that say, I'm self-made, you're not self-made. People that re don't recognize their need for God, that they are dependent and they are reliant upon him. Selfish ambition. Dissension, division, stirring up discord amongst the brethren. Want to see people separated, want to be messy. Want to break people up. Want people not to get along. It's people that don't want people to get along. Discord. These are all spirits. These are all spirits. This does not come from God. These are spirits. Envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't say it. This is the word of God. The word of God says this. That anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Tonight God is calling you to come out of sin. This is a call to come back to Christ. This is a call to come out of sin. Get out of sin. Not to live in sin. This is a call to get on your knees and repent. Repent for your life. Repent. You don't want to die in sin. God is calling you back to him right now. Accept the invitation. No one is too far gone that God cannot pull you back, that God won't accept you, that God won't love you. Nobody is too far gone. Nothing you have done. That you can't come back to God and say, Lord, forgive me. I repent, Lord. Clean me up, Father God. God showed us that God, he doesn't dwell in sin. He's not there. The people the is in Israel... God was not with them, and their enemies defeated them. The presence wasn't there. The presence of God is not in sin. The protection from your enemy is not there in sin. Come out of sin. Father God, we thank you on tonight for your word that you have released, God. Lord, if you begin, begin to open up your mouth, begin to open up your mouth, whatever you've done, sins out of commission, sins out of omission, things I don't even know that I've done, Lord. Forgive us, Lord. Forgive us, your people, God. Things I, we didn't even know that we've done. The things that we knew that we have done, begin to say what it is. Be specific with God. Say what it is. Speak it out loud. The, the nasty thoughts that you had. That you embarrassed to even say to anybody those nasty thoughts. Tell God about it. Confess it. Lord, forgive me for this nasty thought I had. Forgive me for thinking wrong about this person, Lord. Forgive me for judging people. We're not called to judge people. We're only called to judge between right and wrong. If it's right or if it's wrong. Forgive me for judging people, Lord. Forgive. Ask God. Forgive me for the person that I didn't forgive. Forgive me, Lord. Clean me up. Speak to God. Tell him all about it. Come back to God.
We thank you for your word tonight, God. Your word is truth. Your word that gives life, Lord. We love you, God, because you first loved us, Lord. We thank you for giving us this word, Father God, to call us back to you, God. We thank you that you love us so very much that you would even say this, that you would even give us this to, to talk about tonight, God. Father God, even the people later on, Father God, convict them to come back to you, Lord. Allow them to hear you, Lord. And have them to turn, Lord, to turn, to turn. God is saying, sin is in the camp. Turn. Ask for forgiveness. Come back to God. Thank you, Lord. We give you the honor, Lord. We give you the glory, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for being patient. I thank God for being patient with me. Thank God for being patient. Being patient with his children. Thank God for being patient. He was patient with me. He didn't have to touch my life, but he did. I thank God for touching me. For changing my life so that I could come back to repent and turn from my wicked ways. Because I wasn't in him. My heart wasn't right. But God touched me and changed my life. And he can do the same thing for you. This is literally life or death. And if God only sent me on here to speak to one person... I'm asking you to please just come back to God. He's talking to you. Come back to him now. Come on back to God. Cry out before him. He wants you there with him. He wants you to be in his presence with him. He wants to transform your life. Transformation doesn't happen outside of the presence of God. It happens in the presence of God. Where he changes you. He cleans you up. God wants to do, change you. He wants to use you. There is something you're called to do in the earth. But if you're in sin, if you don't come to him, how can you do it? How can you truly fulfill the call upon your life? The things that you were created to do. I didn't know that I would be speaking before, before people. I didn't know that when I was in the world. I didn't know that. I didn't know that I would write a book. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. But because I was in God, because God touched me, and he changed me, he cleaned me up. Now I can walk in the true purpose and to, to fulfill my destiny, the assignment upon my life. You are not here for nothing. You're not here to breathe and soak up air. You are here for a reason and a purpose, and that is to do the will of God for the kingdom of God. 
There are a people waiting to hear your voice. There are a people waiting for you to stand up before them. But how can they do it when you don't come back to Christ? There is an assignment on your life. And God is calling you to hearken to his voice tonight. Your time is now, not yesterday, not tomorrow. It is now. Right now. It's right now. This is the call that God is, he's calling you back to him on tonight. And he's, I hear him saying, come back, my daughter. Come back, my child. Come back, my daughter. Come back, my child. Come back to me. He says, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. And come back to him. Come back to him. Surrender. Surrender. When you surrender, that means that you give up. You, you threw in the towel. You give up. You say, Lord, I give up. I surrender. I, your will, not my will. I'm not fighting you no more, God. I'm just coming back to you. I'm being obedient. I'm hearkening to your voice. I'm being led by your spirit. And I surrender. Have your way, Lord. Do what you want to do with me. Come back tonight. Come back right now. All glory to God. All glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus has already redeemed us. He set us free. We don't have to live in sin. We don't have to be in bondage. It's literally a choice that you make to choose to live that way. So now that you have turned back to God, don't go back. Don't go back to bondage. Don't go back to jail. Don't go back to being in chains. When Jesus redeemed us, this is what it looks like. Can you imagine slaves with chains to their neck, and chains to their hands, chains to their feet, and they all chained together, walking together, chained, chained. But by the blood of Jesus, he broke the chains. He broke those chains. So now you are free. You are free. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. You are free indeed. You don't have to go back living in sin. You don't have to live that way. That's a choice. Choose to be free in God. Choose to live in freedom and liberty. Just because the world is living that way, the children of God, we're different. We stand out. We don't fit in. We're unique. We're different. That's why you felt different when you were in school and nobody, you couldn't fit in. Why do you think you felt that way? You were not intended to, to blend in. You were not intended or called or, or, or he didn't create you to fit in. He created you to stand out. This is the right road to be on, his road, the narrow path. The narrow path, we take the narrow path.
Thank you, Lord. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the honor, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you heard God speak to you tonight. And I pray that you take heed to what he's saying. Um, even to what's to come, that you stay in God. Remain faithful to God. Stay in his presence. Don't let go of God because he won't. Let go or give up on you. Stay in God. We thank you, Lord. I love you guys. But guess what? Jesus Christ loves you so much more. I want you to go out and inspire the world around you to be purpose unstoppable. Thank you guys for coming in. Hello, Marsha. Hello, LaShondra. Thank you guys for coming in. I think I see Miss Phyllis on. Thank you for coming in. Good to see you out. See you guys tonight. I hear God saying that. I pray sweet, I pray sweet uh, peace over you tonight as you sleep peace as you sleep on tonight let peace be your portion as you sleep on tonight in jesus name he says to release and pray pray that over you tonight sweet rest and a peaceful night rest a peaceful night sleep on tonight thank you lord I also hear the, the Lord saying, tell them I love them. Tell them I love them. He loves you with an everlasting love. His love for you will never run dry. His love for you will never run out. It doesn't have a beginning. It doesn't have an end. It continues going on and on and on forever and ever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for your love that you, you show. Love is a verb, it's action. God is love. And we show love to others. And we'll receive, we are showing the love of God when we show love to others. It's an action word. God shows his love for us every single day. So thank you, Lord, for your love. And your kindness. And your grace and your mercy thank you god thank you lord grace is favor undeserved favor you don't deserve it but he gives it to you anyway you've done nothing to receive it he just uh, he's just a good god and he just chose to favor you to give you grace mercy when he gives us mercy it is imagine being pulled over by the police because you didn't you didn't stop at the traffic light and so you go see the judge and you know you're supposed to pay that fine because you know you did it you know you ran that traffic light and you're supposed to pay that fine but the judge tells you you know what you don't have to pay 
His mercy. Showing your mercy. Showing, thank you for showing your mercy. Mercy towards us, Lord. You know you're supposed to. You know that you you were supposed to be in trouble. But God showed you mercy. Mercy. Thank you for your mercy. You know you're supposed to get the ticket. God let you off the hook. Mercy. You know when you're in the world that things were supposed to happen, but it didn't. Mercy. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. You deserved it. But God said, no, I'm going to let you go free. Mercy. Thank you for your grace, your favor, your grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to get on off, you guys. Um, I don't feel like God is want me to say any more. So I'm going to stop right here. And I will see you guys next the Lord allows, I'll see you guys next week. Even though he does have me coming on weekly. But whenever God tells me no, I'm, believe me, I'm not coming on. Because he said no. And I want to obey God all the time. I have, I want a radical obedience towards God. When God says move, when God says no, when God says stop, I'm stopping, I'm not moving. My success is with Jesus, not without him. Can't do we can't do nothing. We can't do things out, out of the will of God and think we're gonna be successful. <laughs> can't do things outside of the will of God and think it's okay. So for right now, I'm coming on weekly. And just know, when he says no, just know that what I'm doing is obeying God. What we should all be doing is obeying our God. Yes, we thank you and so much more. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So I'll see you guys next week. You guys have a good night. Peaceful rest and a peaceful night's sleep. Pray before you go to bed. Pray over your dreams. Remember to write down the dreams when God is speaking to you. Write it out. Write it down. Take it serious. God is speaking. Know that your dreams come from three different places. From God the devil and your flesh three places so pray against those the dreams of the enemy shut his mouth x him out tell him he can't come in and only declare and decree that you will receive the dreams that comes from god only every night that should be a prayer every night and take it serious of what god is saying in your dreams don't search the internet to find out what it means. You seek God and he will begin to reveal. He, sometimes it might not be right away. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about dreams. Okay, I'm going to do what you want me to do, Lord. Sometimes, um, what was I saying? Sometimes um, you're, it might not be revealed right away, but in due time, it will. He will reveal to you what that dream means. He will reveal to you what that dream means and what he's saying to you. When you have, you know, you have dreams that 
just don't sit well, immediately begin to pray over it and come out of agreement with anything that happened in your dream that wasn't like God, that you were like, wait a minute, that couldn't have been. Pray immediately, rebuke it, come out of agreement with it. Dreams are access. It gives the, the enemy access. It gives God access. He speaks to us in our dreams. Dreams are real. Dreams mean things. Was it? Was it Isaac? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Or was it Jacob? It was Jacob. I think it was Jacob. Who had the dream. When God showed up in his dream um, and spoke to him, um, it was also Solomon. God spoke to Solomon in a dream. And he received wisdom. God speaks through dreams. So take your dreams very serious. Make sure, like, you don't. Why am I talking? About? Okay, Lord. Make sure you have um, when you when you you don't have if you have an alarm on your phone to wake or alarm clock or on your phone or a clock to wake you up. Make sure you don't have something that will startle you out of your sleep. Because sometimes when you are startled out of your sleep, that's when you forget. Right? You forget what just happened. You forget what the dream was about. So have something that is like loving and uh, to wake you up you know don't have anything that started you uh, 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 uh. you know <laughs> have something that um you know that is joyous to wake up to that won't start you out of your sleep when you just forget what you just dreamt about and even if that happens I always ask God to bring it back to you bring it back to you so God speaks in dreams so take your dream serious. God will speak, he will be speaking to many of you in your dreams, in your dreams. He says confirming things to you in your dreams. So that's really sometimes that's the only time God can really get to some of us. You know, because you just moving and moving and moving. So now he's like, I got you. Now, now you're just at rest and you're at peace and you're sleeping. Now I can speak to you. So allow God to speak to you tonight. And, or whenever, well, maybe it's tonight, Lord. Okay. Allow God to speak to you in your dreams. <laughs> and um, make sure you write it down, what he's saying, the date, date it, every detail. Write it down and pray over it. Yep, he said he's releasing dreams. He's speaking to you in your dreams. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. All right, so I, I hope this was helpful for you today. Um, I'm going to try to leave again. I'll see you guys next week if it's the Lord's. And that's what the Lord wants me to do. You guys be blessed and have a good night. Good night, everybody.